Thank you. Let's just sit at home straight away. On the show tonight, the superstar of comedy, Mr. Billy Connolly, also the hero of Athens, the remarkable Kelly Holmes. Plus music from one of the hottest new bands around, Razorlight. Now, my first guest is living proof that the American dream can come true. A dyslexic boy with an unsettled childhood, he became the biggest film star in the world. He's made 27 movies, grossing more than $4 billion at the box office. His latest film is called Collateral. In it, he plays a professional killer, making the rounds with an unsuspecting cabbie. Tom Cruise! A home fixture for you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Oh, we all love Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's really it, nice. It's so nice, isn't it? That's very, very big very warm. For a superstar. That's what it is. What about the um, the movie? Yes. Was it like a preview of, of Tom. The I guess so. To come? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. It's going to happen. Playing a wonderful sociopath. Wonderful in the sense, a very interesting character. Yeah, very. Uh, so multi layered. Mm -hmm. I mean, the interesting point about him, he's actually quite a charming man, an intelligent, yeah. articulate man, isn't he? Yeah. Well, one of the things is you look at these antisocial personalities, they, uh, they aren't one dimensional. You know, people who bring chaos into our lives. And, uh, you know, one, one quote uh, Churchill said he's glad he never met Hitler because he might have been charmed by the little devil. <laughs> you know? So, uh, that interested me in playing a character like this, that they're, they're not just, uh, you know, one-dimensional. People aren't. And also, too, <laughs> although there is a sociopath, which means that, you know, there's, there's a connection there that's rather loose. It's not like the rest of us. But he doesn't see himself as being that at all, does he? I mean, he, he argues with a cabbie about, you know, the rights of his job. I get rid of scum, he says. What's wrong with that? Yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing. You know, you look at, uh, at people like that, you, you've got to almost not listen to what they're saying necessarily, but look at what, what do they create in the environment? You know, what are their, if they're a business, what are their products in life? Are they wreaking chaos? Or are they bringing sanity? And uh, it's definitely, you look at uh, Vincent as someone who doesn't bring sanity, brings chaos. Mm. What about the, the, um, the, the, the sort of allure of a part like that? I mean, when you get, obviously get your Tom Cruise, I mean, you're the biggest film star in the world. You're a big producer, you're a big wheel of deer in Hollywood, the biggest. <laughs> but you are that, you know, you are that. You've got more clout than anybody else. I mean, four billion dollars at the, at the box office ain't hay, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so people listen. But, but my point is, when a script comes along, you must have a thousand scripts. What makes you choose that from any other of the thousand scripts that you get? I just read something and I respond just have an emotional response to it. Am I, and then I, well, first time I read a script, I just read, read as if I'm an audience. And uh, Michael Mann sent me the screenplay with photographs of Los Angeles. Originally, the film took place in New York City. And when he moved it to LA, he sent me uh, almost an art, it was an art motif of, uh, of what he wanted, and it really evoked a lot of emotion. Uh, and that's how I decide. I just, then, then I'll read it again, as, and I'll look at the character. And, it's not necessarily an analytical choice for me. It's just, do I feel, is this something? And a lot of times, I don't really analyze it till later. And yet, oh yes, I'm going to make the point, because later on, what you do do, I mean, you, you, you spend lots and lots of times analyzing a character. You even write histories about your characters, yeah. don't you? Yeah, build up a whole history. Specific. So what's the history of the sociopath? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, because the, the nature of the, of the story it takes place in 10 hours, so you have to create the 40 years prior to that to inform the scenes. There's, and finding out certain moments. When does this character become fractured? Does he become fractured? How and why? And uh, so you create, uh, you create a whole background and do a lot of research. I spent five months working with Michael Mann, and I trained, uh, had weapons training. Yes. And uh, you train, 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 and work and structure a character. I mean, this is a character that came from Indiana. And just even it, it informs the choices of the kind of suit that he wears. You know, he's rough trade in a good suit. So all, all of that <laughs> history will inform his behavior uh, so that when you show up and you start working, that it just 
happens. You, 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 I mean, you're such a man of the movies. I mean, you grew up in movies, didn't you, basically? Yes. I mean, you started at a very I was, young age. I, always, I love movies. I always... You did? I love movies. Yeah. Oh, that was the thing. I cut grass and delivered newspapers so that I could save my money and go to the movies. I never thought I'd one day be acting in them and have that opportunity. So it was just ever. a dream? You never thought it was just it a dream. True, so. No, no, no. <laughs> it was it just... One day I said, you know, I'd actually save money to go to, uh, I was going to go to France and I was going to ride a bicycle through France. And I had, I'd say, about $900. And uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to try it. Went to 15 different schools and, and I just went and it was actually my, uh, <laughs> actors hate hearing this, it was my first film audition. I got the role. And, uh, <laughs> It's not easy, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I mean, what are they making it like, so difficult about? You know, what's so hard about this? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's interesting too, isn't it, that you had this problem with dyslexia when you were a child as well. I mean, how bad was that? You know, it was fascinating. It was something that uh, they wanted to put me on medication uh, when I was young, and uh, my mother said no. And uh, at that time, unfortunately, now in the United States, uh, they can actually ask you not to go to the school unless you are medicated. And I was fortunate that I didn't, and I did everything that I could. And then when I became a Scientologist, there's a study technology that L. Ron Hubbard developed. And I started applying that, and I realized that, uh, you know, that it's just a label, dyslexia. Attention I mean, Deficit Disorder, ADD, there's no science behind these things whatsoever. And they are curable. Yeah, Without absolutely. Listen, of... what it is, is it's just knowing, having the proper tools to be able to educate yourself. When, when, when you talk about Scientology, uh, you're used to the response that people give you, aren't you? That you're some kind of nutcase, you know, this kind of lunatic, uh, fringe sort of religion thing. Used people to the response. I mean, fly I, around I, in, in that's spaceship. bigotry. Well, you know, no, that, no, that well, is the religious no, equivalent well be, of I'm putting the point to you that this is what people, this is the people's reaction. No, I think maybe people say that to you. They don't say that to me. Oh. <laughs> well, probably that's fine. I'm, uh, I'm representing a point of view. It's not necessarily well, my I think, point of view I either. Think it's, I think it's, uh, that is an uninformed uh, point of view. And the thing is, is that it's something that I've been a Scientologist for 20 years. And it's something that uh, has helped me in every aspect of my life. Uh, whether it's, you know, with the study technology and the things that, that I'm interested in as a man, which is uh, drug rehabilitation, rehabilitation of crime, the rehabilitation of education. Uh, and, uh, you know, you look at the character of Vincent, I'm the antithesis of that as a man. And uh, so it's something that has helped in every aspect of my life. Well, quite obviously so. I mean, how, how bad was the dyslexia? Because, I mean, you are dyslexic. I was then... a functional illiterate, and there's different levels of that. Yes. Where... Uh, I remember for Top Gun, I went and I wanted to learn how to fly uh, an airplane for research, and it's very difficult. I, I would, I'd be, you know, I would just sit there and listen. A lot of times I wouldn't say things, and I would just try to listen and pick things up. Uh, now I'm a commercially rated instrument pilot. I fly P-51s, and I run three companies. Uh, and I've worked uh, very hard, and I actually help families uh, educate them on on really the, uh, the horrific aspect of psychiatry and these diagnoses, and then putting these children on, on these horrible psychiatric drugs to help. S and medically, you know, and I've been, it's, it's harder because getting the, these kids off these drugs, and, and if people are on that, you sometimes need a, a medical uh, detox before you do that. We actually have a, an easier time getting people off heroin than methadone or these psychiatric drugs, and I've worked very diligently to educate people uh, about this because uh, it, it, it leads to drug abuse. Uh, children fail or, you know, just the same on these drugs, yet it leads to significant complications. When you, when you again, when you were back in, in, in your childhood, before you, you, yeah. you, took, you took this journey, and you were that child who was, who was looking at movies, Errol Flynn, I guess, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Casablanca. Cas oh. When I heard that music oh. that you have Casablanca, every time I see, have you all seen Casablanca? Oh, well, who's you not seen, seen Casablanca? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Beautiful yeah. movie. Ingrid Bergman. I was in love with her. They, they, who was? <laughs> I, I had her on the show and I couldn't keep my eyes. Did hand. you have yeah, her on her show? I did. Oh I did. And I, I just stared at her and said nothing for about <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you used to do impressions, didn't you?
scared the child. Yes. <laughs> you know it's coming, I used to do skits. You? Yeah, you, are, you want me to do impressions? Please. This please, is please. Billy Connolly's coming on later. <laughs> He's funny. I'm, you're really <laughs> impressions. Soon. I used to I used to do impressions of Humphrey Bogart and John Wayne and Jimmy Cagney and Woody Woodpecker and Donald Duck. I used to I used to do what was it like Donald Duck as John Wayne? How does that go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God, you're terrible. All right. Uh, you all don't want to hear this. Do you? <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping you're gonna let me off the hook. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll do. Of course, you also, your first role at school was as, as, as in the song and dance. You did Guys and Dolls. Oh, man. <laughs> You're not going there, man. <laughs> you know, Luck be a lady to not so then. Was that Nathan Detroit? He yes, that? Nathan Detroit. I did Nathan Detroit. Uh -huh. And? <laughs> Isn't Billy Connolly coming no, out? No, gospel <laughs> singers. Got, the girls yeah, asked me backstage. Did. They went, okay. How's the first song go? What is it? Luck be a lady tonight. Something like that. Never. Luck be a lady tonight. Was Luck be a lady. lady. I'm, I'm the fella, fella you, you came, came in with. with. Oh, you know that. Luck, Luck be, be a lady tonight. tonight. <laughs> oh, we should go on the road. Make a tour. Make a, make a tour. <laughs> the only thing that's interesting about, about your life, too, is, 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 your, is the, the company of women. Is the, the, you were brought up by your mum, basically, or your dad. Yes. They were divorced, and you're living with your mum and your three sisters. And your My sister mom worked three jobs, too. Yeah, your we mom all worked. Well, she was a plainly remarkable woman. Yes, she you read about. We call her the Mary Mary Lee. She's an amazing woman. <laughs> yes, I mean, she had three jobs, brought up these children. Obviously, yes. she was broke, no money at all. Yes. And brought up, uh, well, I only know you and your sister, or I met you, and brought up very decent children and nice children, all that sort of thing. I mean, when you think about that, I mean, yeah. that's an extraordinary achievement, isn't it? Yeah, she's. She really taught me how important it is. It's not what you get out of life, but what you give to life in terms of helping people. But what was it like being this, this the only guy? Well, the only guy. The only with, guy with four. four well, girls. you know, you, ladies, you know, you had. Uh, it was great. <laughs> it was great. I have to tell you, amazing women, each uh, very distinctly different and beautiful. Uh, but you know that. You, you know, they're going to get all the hot water. <laughs> okay. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. Uh -huh. You know that you learn to do things very quickly. You know, when the door knocks, you're out. Uh, you be very patient. But we were we were always really close because we traveled around a lot, and, and I, I always felt very protective of my sisters and, and they of, of me. And uh, you know, the girlfriends that I brought home were scrutinized uh, to an intolerable. <laughs> Uh, degree. And talking about the, the, being with all these women too, I read somewhere that, that in fact they, they used to actually make you um, go through kissing practice. Not them. Them. No, <laughs> no. Their friends. Leanne, uh, yeah, her friends, they were at that age where they wanted to practice with their boyfriends. <laughs> so that school bell rang and I was sprint home when I knew her friends were going to be there. Her <laughs> friends would take me into the bathroom and practice, you know. <laughs> Teach me how to French kiss, and uh, you know, you've got to breathe when you're kissing. You know, the first time when I was kissing, I thought I'm gonna pass out because <laughs> I was holding my breath. You know, <laughs> this girl was very patient with me. She's <laughs> <laughs> so. Sisters have friends. It's a good thing. It's. It's. <laughs> I mean, when you read about you, it says you have this. This. This fractured childhood, but I think you had a ball. I had a great childhood. You had a great childhood. No, I had a great childhood. Gosh, I wish I'd have had that kind of practice when I was young. I have no complaints right, whatsoever. Right. What you know and what the audience knows is that they, what you're aiming for all the time are those moments in movies. You talked about the Casablanca, that moment you see with Bergman. We've all got our favourite moments. Um, can you guarantee them? Can you, can you manufacture them? Or do they just come out of no. the, it's the a, ether? No, it's a good question because it's... it's you work, 
you work and you work and you work to just try to create an environment where a moment will happen and uh, and that you you just discover you're discovering these moments you you set up uh, an ideal scene of what you want the story to be or the and you 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 drive towards that. As a film, of course, about relationships. Most films are, of course, your latest films about relationships. Can I talk to you about your relationship that you had with your father? Mm -hmm. Because when you read the research about you, your mother comes out as this very large figure in your life. And your mm -hmm. father's a bit more shadowy, in a sense. You know, he's, he's kind of in the background. Um, is that how it was, or, or is that the way it's been told? No, that's how it was. That's I mean, how it was. My mother, you know, uh, was there. You know, she was, had, was the, the strength, uh, the guide, uh, you know, that's how it was. Mm. I mean, for her, no matter what happened, it, I mean, she really, not Pollyanna, she's not bluebird about life, but she really looked at life in terms of her cup being, you know, half full. And uh, she loved being a mother, and loves, still loves being a mother. And, that's just who she is as, as a person, as and, inspiration. And your father was different than to that, I mean... Yeah, he was. He was, uh, and not saying that, that he was a bad person, uh, but she is the one that helped us. And when, when they divorced, you didn't see your dad? No. No, he was he, he gone. No, I saw him right before he died, and... Uh, tell me about that. <laughs> I saw him right before he passed away uh, in Kentucky. And he was, uh, it was tragic for him because he looked at what he missed out on. Uh, you know, when you talk about, you know, I, I believe people are basically good and uh, that you see what they do to themselves. And that, you know, when he finally had that realization as, as a father, as a man, what his life uh, what, what he created for his life. Uh, it was, you know, it's tragic. And I, uh, I felt for him very, very much. You know, he's my father. I loved him, most definitely. And you were reconciled. Absolutely. You were. No, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I feel no... Uh, I've reconciled with him. Yeah. Mm. What, what effect did that, coming from that, that uh, fractured background, have on you, you as a father, yourself? I mean, has it made you more overprotective, do you think, or what? I've traveled around a lot. The benefits of that are in, incredible, to be able to see and meet a lot of people, uh, even, you know, from a little kid. And they always say, you know, I, I've never met normal, you know, every person that I meet, they have a story to tell. They have some adventure and some part of life that is, uh, is extraordinary uh, in some way. So I, I don't know what this normal is, that I think that people are, are individuals and very unique and very special. Uh, so you could say, well, you, you know, but normal, I don't Would you regard your life that. now as being normal? <laughs> no, Come I, on. I don't know. I don't regard my life. You know, I, I have an exceptional life. An extraordinary life. An extraordinary life. And it's, it's, my whole life has been quite extraordinary. I mean, what's extraordinary about your life is just the way you have to live it. I mean, I talked to, to, to Nick, to Nick Kidman, your, yeah. uh, Kidman, your, your... Yes, I know. Expert. You know that. <laughs> 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 you know, even yes. I called her Nicole Coleman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Kidman. But, but she said that, that, when, that you, when you were in Rome together, you had to go sightseeing at midnight, you know, because you couldn't go out in the day because you'd be mobbed. Yes. <laughs> but that's, but that's, that's strange, isn't it? That's odd. I mean, do you remember doing that? Do I... I remember that. You remember I going... remember that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes that happens, but it's... Uh... You know, it is what it is, and it's, it's uh, listen, it's an exciting life, and uh, there's also, you, you get to meet a lot of people, and uh, a lot of wonderful people. But it, it does have that, you know, it has its benefits, where uh, you can do stuff like that, and, uh, you know. Well, midnight too. When you want to see midnight at the Coliseum, who doesn't want to do that? You know, it's fun. <laughs> probably get arrested, I would think. I thought I was going to get arrested. Did you? Yeah. She teased me, actually, because I climbed over the thing, and then she flashed the lights, and 
pretended she was the police. I thought, <laughs> I get arrested in Rome. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> You're a well-known uh, opponent of gossip. Yeah, I just don't really gossip myself, personally, you know? But this is to... And you sue people who gossip about you? Yes, I do. Quite right. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. Sir. But, but, so, I mean, where, where do you draw the line? Where? Well, well in, in terms of, of gossip. I mean, a million, million words are written about you. Where do you actually... Where's the line in the sand that you don't go over with you? What do you mean, like, the line? Well, well I don't know. Just, uh, I, it really started with the kids when, it's, when I started thinking, OK, just things that I feel are going to affect my children, you know? I feel like protecting them and the family. And then I just kind of go, OK, that's it. Apologize. I mean, I always ask for apology first. Yes. You sing, you're single now. Am I? You are. Yes. I, 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 the, 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 the news just came up. But I just wonder, finally, I mean, do you do, do, getting married again, figuring your plans? I'm getting married this weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. Am I the first to know? Yes, you are Can the first to know. Can I Yes, please. <laughs> do we know the person involved? <laughs> no, you'll see her this weekend. All right. <laughs> I think it's a yes, then. <laughs> Not getting married this week. No, no, of course not. <laughs> no, no. no. But, but I no. mean, you'd, you'd like to, obviously. Yeah, you? I would. Yeah. I like I like marriage. I like yeah. uh, relationships. Yeah. I really, I, I enjoy that. You know, with a woman having that, that dynamic. It's uh, very beautiful and uh, sacred. And I really, I want that in life. Good. Well, Tom Cruise, I, I really much enjoyed talking. Thank to you, you so I, much. I, I it's really a great have, pleasure. A, I really enjoy that. Tom Cruise. I'm very, very honored to be part of. Ingrid Bergman, all the people who are legends. You are a legend. Thank you. 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 Thank we brought them in from the cold, so to speak. Here with a specially arranged version of their hit single, Golden Touch, one of the hottest new bands around. Please welcome Razor Light. <laughs> She's got too much But I know you wouldn't mind You could have it all if you wanted You could have it all if it matters so much But then all they know Is how to put you down When you're there, you your friends But then when you're not too Yeah. 
Yes, he's a superstar of comedy. He's also a musician, an actor. He appeared in The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. A talented welder and a devotee of the fast-growing pastime of bungee jumping in the nude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ever windswept, endlessly interesting, Billy Connolly! Oh, he's nice, isn't he? Yeah, isn't he's he nice. nice. He's yeah. my chum. He's my very pal. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I tell you, we went to Japan to do the samurai, and I just arrived. I was in the hotel. I was telling them earlier, and and I was I was watching the news on Japanese television, and I wasn't I wasn't making much of it, you know. <laughs> it was very interesting, you know. It's, because they all the all over the world newsmen sound like newsmen, but even you don't know what they're talking about. Well, that's when bells are singing like that. <laughs> and, and same as disc jockeys. You know, if you're in Afghanistan and you hear a disc jockey, you don't understand the language, but you know he's talking crap, you know. <laughs> but I was watching the <laughs> sorry. I was <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> he was like shooting with them. I always have to stay in character, make sure you don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> I was watching the news, and of course it, it, it led up to this thing, this this thing that we're going to talk about, which was him. Uh, but I didn't know, you know, it's, uh, because it was Japanese, and and a white aeroplane came on the screen, like from the, the the front, you know, coming on the screen. This white, and and the door opened, and he looked out and smiled, and and the hair flopped like that, and I thought, Jesus, I fancy him myself. <laughs> <laughs> and his mother's the same. This is my mother. <laughs> the whole family. You know. I mean, Boys used to come and practice kissing on me. Oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the local guys. Hey, Bill, come here. <laughs> People talk to you and you like them. People talk to me, I hate them. <laughs> it's okay, you're a beautiful kind of guy. I'm, I'm always like this. <laughs> you know, my, my father said I was like a tramp looking out of a hayloft. <laughs> I was going to Hammersmith Odeon, as I will be soon again. And I, I was in the chair as, as I, cause I, 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 I strayed with such ease through the theatre district. Michael knows this. Oh, do. I was in. <laughs> The elevator, this, this is the truth as I sit here. <laughs> I'm in the elevator, I've got all ready for the gig. I'm in the elevator feeling, well, you look the best you can now, Bill. <laughs> Let's go for it. Because even big, fat, ugly people, there's a point when they're getting ready, they go. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. There's a guy 
guys that do that thing, you know. <laughs> kind of. And so I'm the, I'm the best I can be, and I'm uh, in the elevator feeling, you know, windswept and interesting. <laughs> and the women are very attractive, kind of middle-aged. I don't like saying middle-aged, because when you tell somebody they're middle-aged, if they're in the middle, you're presuming you know where the end is. <laughs> and I kind of don't like that. But she was a very attractive American woman, kind of maybe 40-ish, around there. Although I can't very well tell what people are anymore at her ages. But she, she was standing there, and I went, hello. Do you know that elevator behaviour? <laughs> <laughs> Although my, my very favourite is to stand behind people and go... the back of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but I was... Uh, but this yeah. is... A, you may not believe uh, that this yeah, is the absolute... Yeah, yeah. So people have nerve that you're glad you don't have in your tooth, you know what I mean? <laughs> She's standing there and I went, hello, how are you doing? She said, just fine. And there was a wee silence and then she says, bad hair day. <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> fat ass dick. <laughs> let's, let's now try and conduct a conversation, no. sir. We talk uh, all the time. We do. Uh, no, I'm an audience, <laughs> Billy, that's what I am. <laughs> You've talked to it's, me it's, before. It's, We've it's, talked about uh, many uh, things. Well, my word, we have indeed. What I'm interested in now, of course, is sharing your experience as a film star, as you want. As a film star. As a film star. A legend. A legend, a legend, star, a legend of, of the star. silver screen. Uh, yes. <laughs> now, was it an enjoyable experience working with Mr. Cruz and vice versa? It was an absolute delight. Was it? I loved an it. absolute delight. We both we, had a... We... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we did a scene. <laughs> we, were in a, we were in a Japanese restaurant. Well, it wasn't like a modern one. This is supposed to be back at the turn of the century, or, you know, the Civil War time. And, and, and the Japanese are, are making a meal for us. And it's all pretty weird-looking stuff. And, and I thought, I'll have a go at the wasabi and see what happens, you know? So I took a big lump of that. You know that green mustard that blow your ass off? So I... <laughs> 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 And then we had to match it, so we had to eat it in every take. That's all. Then the director says, oh, that's great, keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> take 12 going on. Jesus, yeah. what a rock now. So he joins in. Yeah. I felt oh, bad for you. Yeah, because he's fantastic, the guy. But I'm like, and then yeah. they cut it out. Uh, he was there. They cut it, very when we cut it out, we had, I was like that discussion with Ed Zwick going, who's going to tell Billy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, I was worried. We had a medic on set guy. worried about, we was going, who's going to tell Billy? we got to tell him that yeah. he's eating all that wasabi. He introduced me to Steven Spielberg when I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're Here, Steven, I want you to meet Billy. <laughs> I, was, I was in a rickshaw sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> They also, they got rid of you very early in the film, didn't they? I mean, you're about sort of... Well, this is, this is the way my career has gone. I almost wrote to Mr. Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I die rather a lot. Yes, it's a no, you're yeah. written in the whole picture, but we couldn't get any shooting done because the stuff's coming out. I mean, literally, you can see takes where I'm saying, everyone's saying, OK, Billy's going to do something, and we just, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen, so... <laughs> I mean, Tough Guys, I was talking with, uh, with Tom about that. You, you played one or two of Tough Guys, haven't you? I have, indeed. Right? Right? I love it. I love yeah. playing bad. See... People, people think there's something odd about you when you say that, but you, good guys tend to be boring on the screen. You know, not in real life. They tend to be very nice in real life, but on the screen, you know, you're, you've got a nice beige cardigan and you're nice to your family <laughs> and you take your dog for a walk, you know? And, and you make love to your wife on a Friday night and, and life's rather jolly. What about leading ladies as well? Because you've had one or two spectacular Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone, well. yeah. I, I, I did a film called Beautiful Joe with Sharon Stone, and she's very nice. And, uh, <laughs> no, she is. She's a darling. And a credit to the motion picture the industry. industry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the bit I like best, we had to go to bed. And, uh, and by, by that time, we weren't talking to one another. <laughs> and the director said, is this going to be difficult for you? You know, you're going to bed with a woman you're not talking to. And I said, I've been married for 22 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to bed with people I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, was, it was absolutely great. But all the main thing I wanted from it was for my old welder pals to see me getting into bed with Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Home run! You know, I love it. And you've also been starring with a snake, haven't you? Your yes, I, uh, I did a film with Jim Carrey, a Lemony Snicket, and a series of unfortunate events. And I'm a, a snake handler, a snake expert, a herpetologist. First, I thought it was a guy with herpes, and I thought, oh, <laughs> God, I've had a scabby face for the whole movie. But, but uh, <laughs> I die again, of course. Jim Carrey kills me in it. I die, are you die in a Muppet movie, for God's sake? <laughs> I think I might be the only one. <laughs> But the, I, it was brilliant, and I had a python round my neck for most of the film, or most of my part of the film. And the, it was an albino python. It's kind of yellow, and, and it, was, it was a beauty. And, and it was maybe like eight feet long, so I had four feet of it dangling down. A, but it fancied me. <laughs> I, I swear, it was a female snake. But it used to moan in my ear. <laughs> it would come up and go... <laughs> and then it took to going. Oh. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> then it would go up in here, you know, and come around the way. <laughs> and then it went in my pocket one day. We're, we're doing the scene and I'm talking. I'm talking to Jim Carrey. The snake is in my pocket. There's scenes like that, you know the thing. <laughs> What are we going to do about this? <laughs> Life can be so funny, uh, don't you think? What about the, the going back on, on stage? Because you're here to do some uh, stand-up in three weeks. Um, yes. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. um, why bother with stand-up now? I mean, you, you've got a successful <laughs> career. Let me tell you exactly why. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> No, I, I mean, my wife has you just... Know, you know, I mean, hasn't the, the sort of acting sort of overtaken all that now, in a sense? No, I do it are? because I, uh, that is basically who I am. I like doing films, and, and I, I, I like trying to do it well, and it's a joyous thing to do, and it's a completely different discipline. I even like drawing things, I like writing stuff, I like fishing, I like all sorts of gear. But a comedian is what I am. I wanted to do it since I was about 10 or something. Saw Jimmy Logan and guys like that and I thought, oh my God, I'd love to check Murray, you know. It's vocational. It's, it's kind of vocational. You can't not do it. Yes. You, you know, you just get on. It's not like acting. Yes. Guys want to be actors for all sorts of reasons. I would assume mostly to get laid, you know. Oh. <laughs> it's like guitarists, you know. Guitarists do it to get laid. Banjo players do it for other reasons, you know. <laughs> you know, you never hear, oh, she's shagging the banjo player. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, that's a plum, 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 plum. Hello. <laughs> What's your sign? Exit. Goodbye. So, <laughs> I, I like life. I think life's good. You know, it's just like one of those things. It's, so what it's, a thing for you to be able, you know, when, when I... It's just, I mean, working on the set with you, you really give joy to people. I mean, yes. I'm telling you, it... The crew and people love you. You just make them laugh, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's also inside, and it's. Uh, it... But you, you know, the, the alternative is so is, is, isn't so good. You know, get around morning yeah. asking for things. Get me, a, I want a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take the air out of the tires in my caravan. I feel too high. <laughs> <laughs> Get me some cocaine. <laughs> Boo. I want a ten-year-old Hindu boy. <laughs> Nose. Somebody have a piss for me. <laughs> <Never move. laughs> it's no use. Well, listen, we're going to break it there because uh, we're going to bring on in just a moment. Well, we're going to talk some more actually when we come back, but then we're going to bring on Kelly Holmes. Now, did you, in fact, watch the Olympics? Actually? I did. You did? You yeah, have, I'm not a big fan of the Olympics. You're not? No. Well, Kelly would be delighted to hear that. Are <laughs> 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 you happy a fan of the Olympics? <laughs> no, it's like, it looks like Nuremberg to me. <laughs> 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 and here's the Fijians. <laughs> he can jump higher than you. <laughs> I don't. It's not how to behave. But and 
floor exercises for men. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Synchronised diving! <laughs> Piss off! <laughs> uh, What's next? Very much indeed, very cool. And finally, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, yeah. On the 28th of August in the Olympic Stadium in Athens, history was made. Kerry Holmes is only the third woman in Olympic history to win a double gold medal. She's a national treasure and a hero. Ladies and gentlemen, our very own Kerry Holmes. <laughs> Gosh, they're heavy, aren't they? They're they are. beautiful. <laughs> well done, girl. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You must be living a dream. <laughs> totally. It's still so surreal to me. <laughs> All of this. Uh, you know, I never ever expected kind of the response I've had coming back and still very overwhelmed by it all. And it's only just beginning, basically. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we provide the clothes there because you don't have any, do you? <laughs> they're all, they're all <laughs> back in Athens. <laughs> yeah, well, my clothes are in South Africa and I've been living out of my bags for, what, five months. Um, and I've, all I've got is a pair of jeans, a pair of combat trousers and the rest of it is sports kit galore. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was panicking today. I was thinking, I cannot come on the Parkinson with Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> 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 what back his job, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely stunning. Um, did you like the other two? Did you dream of doing this when, when you were a young person? Yeah, since the age of 14, um, I had two dreams. One was to go in the British Army, and the other one was to be Olympic champion. And I've had a long career. I mean, I've been going as a senior since uh, for 12 years now. Had a lot of ups and downs, and um, but always live with my dream, and always had this kind of burning desire to keep going for as long as I can, so I don't ever regret my career. And finally, 20 years later, it came not only once but twice. Did you? <laughs> Did you at any time just feel like giving up? Do you think it's not going to happen? This is a stupid having this dream. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, emotionally, it's been a total roller coaster. Um, you know, when something means so much to you, and, you know, some people say it's obsessiveness or whatever, but it just <laughs> meant so, so much to me to achieve my goals and my ambitions. And, um, you know, when I've been at the lowest, uh, I've just wanted to throw everything away and just think I can't pick myself up anymore. You know, I've had so many injuries. I mean, you name it, I've probably had it um, as an athlete. And um, but like I say, there's always this one nagging thing in my heart, like, just don't give up, don't give up. And so I fought back and <laughs> fought back and fought back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, been an emotional wreck most of the time, but <laughs> <laughs> I got through it. It's inspiring what you've it accomplished. Inspiring. I mean, to be able to do that is have a goal and to work so hard yeah. because you can't the, the really lesson there for everybody that. isn't yeah, it that's, really, a, that's yes. the great thing about congratulations it. yeah to really thank you. yeah Beautiful. and uh, you realize of course you're in the in the presence of two great athletes oh well <laughs> that's <laughs> <Yes. Greco> Roman <laughs> <Rexler>. <laughs> and this man this man here um, a cyclist as, as soon as they make picking up the tab and olympic event <laughs> Then they'll start going I'm the guy with a gold medal straight <laughs> away. They haven't made anything else, so you yeah. never know. I love all then you'll be right in there, right? Drugs at the Olympics. And it's a shame it's like steroids and all that. It would be great if it was marijuana, wouldn't it? <laughs> See, <laughs> see people clattering around and then stop and going, gee, look at that light. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think that actually, because Kelly, you are now part of it, you have been part of the British Olympic bid, to the bid to bring the Games here in 2012. You should caught Mr. Connolly, I mean, with what he's had, his views on, on the Olympics. I mean, what, <laughs> I heard. What, yeah, you heard. What, yeah, yeah. Well, when well, they have Banjo, them, he'll yeah. be marching for the country. Well, just yeah. remember yeah. that athletes have given drugs a bad name. <laughs> 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 if Billy actually will present the case, I feel a lot more confident that we'd actually win it. I really it might be I'll be the madman yeah. in the kilt that runs <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, but the great thing about about uh, about athletics and uh, sport is that is that we can it engages all of us, doesn't it? Because it's something that one time or another in our lives we've all done. Not all been actors, not all, we can't all be comics, but but we've all tried to run. We all know how, how it is, and that's the great inspirational thing about athletics that, that it, it it has this kind of reaction in people that got you the standing ovation when you walked in. You see? Yeah, and even um, this week I had a parade down my hometown in Tunbridge. And I was quite worried that maybe there wouldn't be that many people out there because they'd, oh. you know, made this big event. And, um, you know, this is what nearly reduced me to tears. I came down, I was coming down my hometown and there was people from the old people's home out and, and pe disabled people in wheelchairs and little babies mm. and kids and just... It was so overwhelming and when I got to the town, apparently the police said there was 80,000 people there and <laughs> I mean I just couldn't believe it I was so gobsmacked I mean just little old me on this bus and I was <laughs> you know 80,000 people and just to see how much my performances may have touched people for me you know just <laughs> my heart just goes like <laughs> mad it's just absolutely like amazing and like you say it just affects everybody and that's yes, what that's was right. really nice. Do, do, are you prepared for how it's going to change your life? <sighs> uh, <laughs> I still kind of can't come to terms with the amount of support that I got because when we were in um, in Athens we were kind of in a bubble you know we didn't see any I never saw any media um, that was around and so I was very shocked about what happened coming over here and I, I'm really excited of what's going to happen in the future and um, looking forward to it I'm expecting people to come out of the woodwork that don't even know me Tom knows a lot about that eh? <laughs> 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 you know, just expecting, yeah just expecting all these different things but I can handle it now you know at the you end can. of the day I've got what I wanted, and uh, that's what it matters, and I'll have a big smile on my face forever. <laughs> I'll keep it there. It's uh, a wonderful achievement. Thank you. So we'll see you on television next Tuesday on GMTV, of course. You're I am. I'm really out. looking forward to it. It's fun. I think it's great. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been on things throughout, you know, throughout my career. Like I say, it's 12 years I've been... I've been the best female athlete for since I started and <laughs> for 12 years of it. But there's been odd times, but obviously never had as much attention as this has brought me. And I think kind of all what? those ups and downs is pinnacle has been now and I can kind of forget all those moments. What about now? Oh, no. I can't even look at him. So <laughs> 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 Billy, you and I are superb. Shall we just walk off and yeah. leave these two people together? Uh, Excess baggage. Excess baggage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's all we've got time for. But uh, Kelly Holmes, thank you very much, Annie. Kelly Holmes. Thank you. My thanks to Tom Cruise, to Billy Conway, to Kelly Holmes, and to Razor Light. And from all of us here, a very good night. Good night. <laughs>a look at next week's Parkinson and for a laughter packed Monday night join the coupling friends for a panic filled pregnancy at 9.30 followed by a nightmare fire drill on the office Monday night on ABC coming up at home with the Braithwaite's